Are you looking for a smart way to get ahead? Are you worried about possible losses in the market? I'm here today to talk to you about the core and satellite method, core satellite approach, the core satellite portfolio. Now, the key point with this approach is very simple. It gives you certainty, it gives you stability, and it also lets you get ahead. Stick around to the end where I go over some of my key favorite assets and investments to hold within this core or the portfolio. So within the core, you more or less want stability. Now, there's a couple of ways of achieving that. Number one in that core is having a diversified set of assets. Now, when you're thinking about this, we're not just talking about different sectors of the stock market. So having some utilities, having some tech, uh, having some consumer staples. Instead, we're talking about the stock market and then diversifying away from that asset. Now, the traditional way of doing this is with bonds. Uh, I also think it's nice to have some of the commodities in there as well. Now, when you're thinking about commodities, these are not income generating assets. However, if you think about, for example, uh, the all weather approach outlined by Ray Dalio, commodities is in there. It's a nice diversifier. When the economy often goes down, commodities will often rise in a value. And so the two offset one another. Now, this brings me to a really important point within the core, which is rebalancing. So stock market goes down, commodities go up. At that rebalancing point, you're selling commodities high, you're making a gain, and then you're reinvesting into the stocks, rebalancing them out in your portfolio. And what that means is after that decline in stocks, eventually it goes up in value again. Selling the commodities high, buying the stocks low, and then you ride that with a rebalanced portfolio. So the rebalancing is a really important and powerful way of evening out and reducing some of those drawdowns and taking advantage of inverse correlation or weaker correlations amongst the stocks in the market and with other asset classes. And that is really important as we get into the core. So let me tell you what else is interesting here. One of these funds, KMLM, for example, invests in a diversified asset base of diversified commodities. It's been well managed, it tracks a very well established index, and as it creates gains, as it buys low and sells high and gains, it's going to be paying some of these assets out as well. So it does kick off some dividend income. It varies every year. At the moment, it's listed as about a 12% dividend per annum. Now that's quite nice. Now, the really cool thing about this is, of course, and this is where it gets interesting, is that beautiful inverse correlation. As the stock market crumbles because of worries, because of fears, KLM is going to gain. Now, the benefit from that, as I say, is the rebalancing that you can take place and put forward in your own portfolio. Sell high, buy low, and boy, oh boy, that's going to help. So that's one approach that you can take. Coifin helps me to assess a range of different investment opportunities and make the best possible and well-informed decisions. Now, there's a link in the description for the video below. I've got a fantastic affiliate link there. If you click on that link, I will receive a small commission if you buy a license and buy a subscription. That will help me, it will help out this channel, it will help me to continue to produce interesting, useful, and engaging content. Not only that, if you use the link down below, there is a very nice discount for you, waiting for you. Let me know what you think about the Coifin platform. And now, to the video. Now, another really interesting approach is that an ETF that also sells covered calls. Now, the benefit of this type of fund is simple. It's generating additional income. Why is that important? Well, when the stock market goes up, this type of fund tends not to perform as well because the covered calls will cap the upside potential. But when the market is trending lower, the covered calls are not going to be uh, called or exercised. Now that means that the fund is getting the income from those covered calls and that income is then offsetting that decline that you'd otherwise see. Now if you put this into perspective, a fund like uh, JEPI, J-E-P-I, this is a fund which has a roughly, at the moment, 10% distribution because of the covered calls. Now, what that means is if the stock market declined by about 20%, you take that 20% fall on the stocks, but you're adding in a roughly 10% income. So that means that the downwards plunge of this fund is going to be cut in half 
for a stock market plunge at 20%. Now that gives me some confidence. That means that I'm not participating all of that downside. That means that there's income that's still coming into my account. I don't have to sell stocks as the market comes down. I don't have to sell those stocks at a low price to generate money into my account. So those types of covered call funds can be very powerful. Yes, I love income. And yes, I think there should be some income in here. Now, normally within a core, I would advocate for an ETF, an exchange traded fund. These are buckets or baskets of different companies. It gives you instant diversification with a single purchase. And you have a fund manager then taking care of that diversification, taking care of, for example, annual rebalancing. That is powerful. It lets me sleep well at night. Yes, I pay a little bit for the privilege. but if we select those ETFs very carefully, we're paying a very small annual management fee for that benefit. For income also within the core, it is possible that you might look for a single well-established income generating company. Now, if, and this is a big if you were to do this, it would be a very small part of the core because of the lack of diversification. Now, an example of this might be Aries Capital, ARCC. This is a business development company or Main Street Capital, M-A-I-N. Now, in both these cases, they're well-established, well-regarded business development companies. Now, they spit out money, and they spit out quite a lot of income. ARCC spins off about 10% per year. Main Street Capital spins out about 7% per year. Main Street Capital, however, does also appreciate in value over time. They don't gen as generate as much income as ARCC does, because on top of loans, on top of debt assets that they hold, they also hold more equity investments. So as the markets do well, as companies grow and prosper, Main Street Capital also rises in value. Now that's in contrast to many other BDCs like ARCC, which primarily invest in debt, and that gives them a higher payout and a higher distribution and dividend that it pays to the shareholders. Now either of those two might be in that core but it means that there's a lack of diversification. Now, each of those business development companies, they invest in hundreds of different companies. They lend money. They take equity positions in companies. They often have quite a good spread over different industries or different geographies over the USA. So each one of these companies does have a level of diversification, but, and this is a big but, it lacks or lessens the diversification within that core of the portfolio. Now, there's a couple of things that we can do with that. For example, we can shrink them down to a small part of the core, or we could take that ETF opportunity as well, and we might buy an ETF that focuses on BDCs. It's immediately going to give us a high level of income as well as a bit more stability. Now, one of the final challenges and problems of including a single company like Main Street Capital within the portfolio is it will tend to be more volatile. Now that means that the portfolio itself isn't going to fulfill the same type of purpose of stability that we might want. And this is one of the reasons that ETFs do really well within the core of the portfolio. So what is the, the right approach then for developing this core? Well, absolutely, you need to understand who you are, what is important to you. Is it simply about helping you to sleep well at night? Is it simply about ensuring that you have strong diversification so, or will be assured that you will at least follow most of those market gains and market moves? Are you really interested in income? Are you really interested in more stability? Understand what you want to achieve with your portfolio. Then from that, you can begin to work backwards to get the right components in the right proportions within that portfolio. Within the core, I do like income, but I also like growth. Now, there are some ETFs as well, like SCHD, which give a reasonable level of dividend income, and on top of this, dividend growth, and on top of this, also beautiful capital appreciation. So for me, SCHD is a big part of my core. That is the way I like it. For me, it ticks off a lot of those boxes. It also provides me with quite a bit of diversification away from, for example, the S&P 500, or the NASDAQ 100, where there is a very top heavy technology focus. Now, I don't particularly like that in what I want to see, that diversification in the ETF. So for me, having something like SCHD there 
gives me more diversification away from those technology names. Now that helps me to sleep well at night. Now on top of SCHD, I sometimes want some further diversification. So personally, I might be looking for a company or an ETF. I might be looking for an ETF like Moat. Now this follows the Morningstar's Moat Index. So we're looking for companies which are assessed by the Morningstar analysts as having a strong Moat, a strong corporate competitive advantage in that marketplace. Now, that's really important for two big reasons. Number one, they are less likely to disappear because they've got the advantage they're going to have that sticking power. And number two, that advantage means that it's more difficult for competitors to come in and challenge them, and so they should be able to earn extraordinary margins, extraordinary profits, and they should be able to maintain that lead in the industry. So the MOAT, M-O-A-T, ETF, invests in these companies it's going to be a different mix to uh, SCHD it's going to be a different mix away from the S&P 500 now if you do want to have that exposure to the large cap companies there are other options now one of the really interesting options here is simply instead of a market cap weighted ETF that focuses on the S&P 500 now the market cap ETF means that as a company becomes bigger and it has a greater market cap, it's going to gray, take a greater proportion of the investments in that ETF. Which is great when things are going for those companies, but it will also enhance volatility. Decrease volatility, reduce the impact of mega caps, look for an equal weight ETF such as RSP. The smallest S&P 500 holding has the same weight as the largest 